hey, you can get some cool and fun rewards for helping me help kids. Stick around after the video for more information. All right, well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about Gemini Man? Stick around and find out. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. You guys finish the rest because that's usually about the time I change the channel to watch something else. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of Gemini Man. The synopsis on IMDb reads, A retiring assassin, Henry Brogan, finds himself persuaded by a mysterious killer, or pursued, excuse me, by a mysterious killer that can predict his every move. Discovering that he's being hunted by a younger clone of himself, Henry needs to find out why he's being targeted and who the creator is. I don't know, he finds out why and who uh, pretty soon in the movie. The rest of it is mostly like a, a chase, you know? I mean, so let's just jump into the basic tone and script and feel of this thing. It's an action movie with light sci-fi elements, those being the cloning tech primarily, and just a few touches of other very subtle things that you could believe maybe do exist somewhere in the world today. Uh, and then, you know, it's it's a shooty, sneaky, special opsy type of movie. You know, really got me in the mood to play more Ghost Recon Breakpoint later today. It also has some heart. Uh, which I was hoping would be the case, as uh, as Will Smith seems to try to inject that into his action movies and has for years. Uh, so it briefly touches on drama associated with strained father-son relationships and also issues of regret. But it's largely this cat and mouse military black so black ops action movie uh, with other scenes included about licking wounds and delivering exposition while building to the next action sequence. Uh, as far as the cast goes, Will Smith once again presents uh, an action hero with heart. Uh, I think he's really good for that these days, and he uh, delivered what I hoped and expected from him. I also suspect he was giving a great performance as his younger clone self, but more on that in a second. Mary Elizabeth Winstead co-stars as an agent assigned to monitor Will Smith, and then basically she gets swept up in the action and allies herself with him and she's on the run with him and I've really enjoyed uh, seeing her in every movie that I've seen her in in the last probably five to ten years you know she um, plays uncertainty and vulnerability so well but often is also playing characters that have determination and strength you know as was the case in uh, her uh, leading role in the the, mo the prequel to The Thing um, and she brings those same qualities here and is a great compliment rather than a hindrance to Will Smith's, uh, Will Smith's uh, character, Henry. Uh, okay, so let's talk about those visual effects. The big gimmick of this movie, as you could probably see from watching the trailers, was Will Smith is playing both you know, his normal-aged self, and then also his clone, which is like 25 years younger than him. Um, and so, and, and even the haircut that they chose for his clone definitely evokes uh, his Fresh Prince of Bel-Air days, you know. Uh, the the de-aging and whatever CGI trickery they used to accomplish this was the main effect in the movie, and it really, really failed for me. I, I had those suspicions watching early trailers, but I was thinking, well, maybe this, this is unfinished. Maybe they're still going to touch things up a little bit. That can happen sometimes, but uh, it didn't work out for me. Now, please note, I do have an eye that's cursed to pick out CGI for some reason more than most viewers, so you may not have the same issues that I have with this movie and other CG-heavy movies at all, um, but almost every moment that they showed the clone's face moving or looking, or talking, or blinking, anything where the, there was movement on the face, expressing itself in any way, it felt overly smooth and animated somehow. Uh, the same often happened in action sequences, where his entire body was doing movement, and it seemed to have an animated feel to it when the, fighting with his older self. Uh, almost like, you know, the physics were off, the gravity's off somehow, you know. Uh, Ang Lee designed this, the, the, Ang Lee's the director, he designed this movie to be viewed at an extremely high frame rate and fidelity. Uh, actually only 14 theaters in America, according to an IGN article, can show this movie as intended by the director. It was this viewing mode that the director had in mind while creating the doubling and de-aging effects for Will Smith. An IGN article quotes 
Ang Lee as saying you can't put on makeup or erase wrinkles or have his son play him and call that a clone. So he really felt like this method of creating a clone for Will Smith was the way to do it. And I would have preferred his son to have played that part. Maybe filmmakers in general don't understand this yet, or maybe they do, but the technology hasn't arrived to solve the problem and they're just doing their best for now. But the issue for me in creating realistic biological CG is no longer about adding more detail or texture or getting the lighting right or having sharper images. It's about capturing the minuscule details of moving biological life, whether that's animals or humans. Uh, when they're made of CG, uh, they can often fool me if they're frozen images or if it's a scene where that character or creature is barely moving. Then I can like be fooled and believe for a moment that that object, that character, is actually on the set, actually with those other human performers. But once they start moving, it all looks like highly detailed cartoons to me. And this movie had a lot of that going on. Now, otherwise, the action was great, and it put me in the mood to play more Ghost Recon Breakpoint. So it was good for that, you know? But the effects being what they are took me out of the experience repeatedly and ultimately make this a very forgettable movie for me. Now as far as themes go, I think potentially there are some jumping off points for worthwhile thought or conversation about issues of real life that actually have real weight. As I mentioned, uh, there are some strained father-son issues that are touched on in a couple different ways, but not really explored. The larger theme, though still not delivered in a way that provoked thought for me, was regret. Will Smith's Henry is trying to retire from decades of serving as a US special ops assassin and he has become filled with regret, haunted every night by nightmares because of the lives he has taken over the years. Uh, now the story doesn't offer really a viable path for redemption, uh, certainly not something that reflects uh, the, 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 the biblical worldview uh, that Jesus pays for all of our sins um, if we trust in him to do that for us. Uh, in fact, there's a subtle suggestion of making up for past deeds by putting some good in the world. It's very, very subtle. It's not preachy at all. Maybe I'm even reading too deeply into it to pull that message out. But, uh, um, but you know, putting good into the world is what we should already be doing, you know, with every day of our lives the first time around. So we can't really make up for failures today by doing what we should already be doing, you know, today anyway, you know. Uh, but admirably, the movie seems to recognize more readily than others the flaws we inevitably have. Um, I think so often we can kind of try to think of ourselves as pretty good people, pretty decent people or whatever, but it's all relative, you know. When we are comparing ourselves to the holy perfection of God, to the perfect life lived out by Jesus, we fall pathetically, miserably short, you know. Um, when the head of the a uh, cloning operation tells Henry, Henry, I wanted to make the perfect version of you. Henry emphatically replies, there is no perfect version of me. And I thought that was a really good thing to, uh, to put out there. You know, and it's important for us to uh, remember to be willing to acknowledge our flaws instead of trying to make ourselves feel better about, you know, uh, where we are and who we are. You know, I think we need to daily in humility say, yeah, I'm messed up. I am broken. I need to be fixed. I need to be repaired. There is something better that I could be pursuing, you know. Um, and at the same time, we can rest in the hope that Jesus offers in his promise to make us perfect, incapable of sin, with new, perfect, immortal bodies that won't grow old or become sick as I am <laughs> right now. Um, we don't need to figure out how to be okay with our brokenness. I think that's actually, you know, depending on what we mean by that, that can be just a way of avoiding the reality of our brokenness and what needs to be changed in us. Um, so I don't think that's the path to, to you know, to uh, find peace, really. Um, Jesus is always calling us to something higher and closer to perfection. But at the same time, we also don't have to uh, despair about the pervasive clinging nature of sin in this life that I don't know about you, but I feel, every, I have an awareness of every day. I'm just like, oh God, would you free me of these tendencies of this stuff that just sticks to my mind and my activities and my words every day? Um, one day we will be completely free of it. 
uh, of those things. That's the promise uh, because of what Jesus has done for us. So uh, that's not at all the message of this movie, you know, but it is something that came to mind that I'm grateful for as I uh, walk away from this experience. Uh, now, I have no idea what your tastes in movies are, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, uh, wait. Wait for this one um, on a night that you want to kill some time with something that's stealthy, shooty, special opsy. This one could scratch that itch, but you also want to wait for it to be on a service that you already pay for, like Amazon, Amazon Prime. This, this one is not even going to be worth it to you to go out of your way to pay a buck fifty to get at Redbox. Um, those are my thoughts pretty much for now. You can get my spoiler-filled reactions to Gemini Man in my spoiler car video series. Just one of many perks available for your support over at patreon.com slash Productions. This one's rated PG-13 for violence and action throughout and brief, strong language. All right, that's all I have to say. I'd love to get your comments uh, below. Please like, share, subscribe, click that notification bell. Anything you want to do to stay connected and share this content with others, I'd be grateful for. Um, and I want to thank the Spirit Blade in Insiders for making this review possible. Again, patreon.com slash Productions. And I hope you'll join us soon over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to look for the button and seek the truth. Hey, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. For my sixth consecutive year, I'm participating in Extra Life, a charity event that raises funds to provide medical care for children in urgent need. I'm also leading the Christian Geek Central Extra Life team, which you're still welcome to join by following the link in the description below. Once again this year, I'm drawing attention to our team's fundraising by performing a 24-hour marathon of video gaming that I will stream live on YouTube.com slash ChristianGeekCentral and ChristianGeekCentral.com beginning 6 a.m. Pacific Time on Saturday, November 2nd. You can donate on my page or on any team member's page by following the links below where you will also find incentives and rewards for doing so. For example, on my page, for $5 or more, you can choose a topic to add to my plus three page of many topics that I'll be blabbing my opinions on during the live stream. For $10 or more, you get the previous reward and a download code for a free copy of the Spirit Blade Special special edition audio drama. For $20 or more, you get the previous rewards and you can choose a game for me to play during my November 2nd live stream. Pick a favorite or torture me with something terrible or rage-inducingly difficult. For $30 or more, you get the previous rewards and you can choose a song for me to sing during my November 2nd live stream. Pick an old favorite of yours or just make me humiliate and torture myself with something no one wants to hear. And for $50 or more, you get all the previous rewards and a download code for every mp3 product at spiritblade.com that's an $80 value on top of that I've set fundraising milestones that will unlock strange and unusual happenings as I reach them at $200, I'll have a free download day for everyone who visits spiritblade.com on November 6th. And as my total goes beyond $200, I'll unlock increasingly more content for that free download day. I will also let my boys tickle me for one minute straight during my November 2nd live stream. And depending on how far beyond $200 my fundraising goes, I will cover my face in peanut butter and jelly while talking about horror movies, put on a frozen solid t-shirt the morning of my live stream while playing video of me singing soothing classical music at my senior recital in college, shoot water up my nose with a turkey baster, get my wife Holly to play a game with me for 30 minutes of the live stream, or the granddaddy of all milestones, squirm intensely, mortified while showing an embarrassing video clip from the original stage version of Spirit Blade. Now there are some stipulations and time limits on those rewards and milestones, so quickly follow the link below to my fundraising page for all the details. I hope you'll be a part of helping me and the Christian Geek Central team do some good for some kids uh, who really need it. And then, please join me at uh, youtube.com slash christiangeekcentral for my 24-hour marathon starting at 6 a.m. Pacific on Saturday, November 2nd. Hope to see you there.